I remember 2012 was the first time your mom got on a plane to PE, which was pretty dope for me. Mm. And we were going to visit you in Grahamstown, uh, Makanda, no longer Grahamstown, because you were graduating. Yeah. Um, it was a great experience. I think it was the first time my first born son, Nkunz Malang, I was on a plane, mm -hmm. two years old, very mm -hmm. passionate about kicking ball around. There's a lack yeah. of video where he kicks a ball, Mr. Chai Vatkanj. <laughs> So dope. I do do. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that's, that's, that's what he referred to, Ipod, I do do. There were two big takeaways from that, that visit. Mm. The first one was The Soil, who mm -hmm. had just released an album, which I think when they do a movie soundtrack of our lives, mm. definitely some of that music is going to play then. Part of that show. Then there was, a, there was some clips you made me watch, or it was actually one clip. Mm. And it fundamentally shifted my mind mm. where even today, when I still think about speaking motivation, I go back to Eric Thomas. Yeah. When you oh, want to wow. succeed as, as bad, bad as, as you, you want to breathe, breathe that's when you'll be successful. successful. Like, yeah. Yes. yes. You know, and one of, like at, le at least with this conversation, I, I wanted to maybe ask you, mm. you know, to make it a bit personal. Eric Thomas has a great clip on what is your why? Kevin Durant. Mm. Maybe you can start by speaking through that video and then if you can maybe explain what your why is in your life. I think I think that video touched a lot of us. Um, Which one? That uh, when you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> because it was at a phase in our life where we were transitioning, if I can call it that, into something else. We were morphing out of that whole education or academics or degree is the part to success, moving into these different avenues of success. And guys like Eric Thomas sparked something in all of us. Uguti no man, um, success is not just getting a good job in corporate. Success mm -hmm. is not just this or that and that's what spoke to us um it was our first taste of the other side you know so at that time um i wasn't just consuming eric thomas i was also consuming there's a bodybuilder called ukai green made us go down another deep philosophical rabbit hole and of how he thought of what success is um there was um there's that clip that you loved playing mm. that talks to productivity tony mandarik yeah. Mandarich or Mandarich. You know, and we were going through all of that and we didn't realize what that was actually planting mm. in, in, in who we were versus what we were told success was. And thinking about where we are now, thinking about what we're consuming now, Boma Joe Rogan, Boma Andrew Tate, Boma this and that. It's great that you're actually bringing it up because that was the beginning, ne? I think so. And look, that Eric Thomas video for me was a gateway drug into, you exposed me to Kai Green, but you've got mm. guys like Les Brown, mm. uh, oh, Miles Monroe, yeah. may he rest in peace. T.D. Jakes. Um, T.D. Jakes, uh, obviously Tony Robbins, yeah. of which a lot of people to this day still slash motivational speakers, which makes me feel funny because oh, at some point it was like daily bread. It's like after eating, you need to feed you, your mind. You, you, we, 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 we throw into the wolves with, with no understanding of what's going to happen there. We, we don't know the role of a motivational speaker, mm -hmm. but we do understand the role of a pastor. We don't know the role of Inyanga, but we understand the role of a pharmacist, mm -hmm. you know? So we've been fed a certain diet or a certain narrative, um, but we haven't been told the whole story, mm -hmm. you know? So give me, when I listen to someone who laughs at a motivational speaker, uh, you might as well laugh at a personal trainer. You might as well laugh at a teacher. School of any teacher. Sort, you know, so give me, I just think that we we go about it the wrong way. People are like, why do you listen to the same motivational clip all the time? Mm. Why do you listen to the same Beyonce song all the time? Why do you sing, why do you, why do you pray the same Our Father every day? Oh, every day, you know, um, why do you make your spaghetti the same way? So mm. give me, it It speaks to a, 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 a deeper level of where I am in my journey, mm. you know, um, what is fascinating with following guys like Kai Green, and Kai Green is this bodybuilder, so you see him, Mr. Muscles, and he's in- built like a fucking 
like a tank co- machine. Yeah, like, and and he has this line where he says, "Thoughts becomes things," and he speaks of creating something in your mind before it becomes the reality. And he speaks about how you have to block everything out. And then you break it down from a philosophical point where you start looking at people like uh, a Plato or Aristotle. And you look and you draw parallels between how those early thinkers were going into a Kai Green who is a bodybuilder. And you go, fuck, that's why a Aristotle got to train and teach Alexander the Great. Ne? And then this guy dominates and becomes successful mm. because of the way that you think. Eric Thomas is saying when you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, he's talking to writers, academics sitting in a class who are writers. Mm, the school kids that were in a writing class. <laughs> you know, but you know, he's drawing parallels between that version of success. Mm. In your mind, you're thinking that he's talking to Navy SEALs. And we didn't have that. We didn't know, Wuti, you can approach life in whatever you do, playing the violin or uh, whatever as a school teacher, in that same energy. Mm. And I think that to us, especially of how we were brought up and on that transition, whatever, that spoke volume to us. Mm. You know. Um, but yeah, man, that's, that's such an interesting... Something I wanted to say now, it's just escaping when up. you were speaking about... Thinking, sorry, Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. Mm. One of the greatest, if not the greatest, personal finance book before Rich Dad Poor Dad. Mm. Robert Kiyosaki references Think and Grow Rich and Napoleon Hill went and he spent time with the wealthiest men of the time. Mm. And he created this book and he wrote it about thoughts, mm. thinking and how you can you can work that. So Eric Thomas speaks about what is your why? Mm. Kevin Durant, mm. when Durant scores, and I was yeah. asking if you could speak through, if you remember that video clip, number one. Mm. And then number two, if you could explain what your why, what keeps you going, what makes you gym, hustle, etc. So so my why has changed within the years. Do you remember the video? Yeah, of course. You definitely remember that video. Um, Do you, if you could please speak on what the video says. So, so this video, the clip that I'm thinking about is a basketball clip. Yeah. Um, where they're playing basketball and uh, it's about highlighting Kevin Durant and how he's scoring all these things. Mm. And ooh, Eric Thomas is talking to people and asking them what's their why? What are they doing? Why Why are they doing what they're doing? You know, waking up early, pushing, uh, uh, uh. Mm. what's your why? You know, what motivates you? What drives you every day to keep going? And I've got shallow levels and I've got deeper levels. Do you remember you know? Kevin Durant's why? What was his why? Something about his coach that had passed away at a certain age and wears a certain number or his coach had passed away. What Kevin Durant's number? 39? I don't rem- I don't know. I'd be lying. Well, I think the number on his jersey is like a number 39 or something. Mm. And his coach that was monumental in his success also passed away at 39. Mm. So when he wakes up and he pushes, was for his coach every day. You remember the Buster Douglas story? I do remember. I think Buster he's Douglas. the guy that knocked out Tyson. Mike Tyson, yeah. Remember his why? Because he's he told his mama that he's gonna beat Mike Tyson, you know, and people laughed at his mom. Then his mom passed away, mm. and what he was left with was the fact that his mom told everyone that Buster's gonna beat Mike Tyson. Mm. So if you have that, the last wishes of my mother is for me to knock out Mike Tyson. As to what the fuck I'm gonna do. Before you speak about your why, do you remember? Um, there's a human clip that I've made you watch the human documentary. A uh, human series with a young boy. Yo, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Shit is deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm done. Yeah, you, you need to carry on from here. No, 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 no. Lentoana. I'm scared that um, my eyes are gonna get watery, man. No, 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 no. There's no, allergies no, no. in the room. I, yeah, I, I, I think everybody needs to watch that clip. Um, <laughs> of that lighty who's talking about death and his father, um, and. Uh, uh, it's a lighty who looks or who lives in the Middle East and is talking about um, what we deem terrorist organizations and how he's not phased by death um, because death will bring him closer to his father and his job is to avenge whoever killed his father until the day he is reunited with his father this is like a 10 year old boy who's saying this very young and if you already have shaped your mind Woodsy 
death is the gift. If you kill me, you are blessing me with the gift of reuniting me with, your, with my father. But from now till then, I will avenge him in every way possible. How do you beat a person like that? How do you beat a person like that? Who's 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 yearning to be reunited with his father? Machita. <laughs> Until you actually go to know, Mang Bulala, you have blessed me with the te- with the with the gift of Klangan and Dime. But you, but, but from now till then, till I till I'm blessed with this gift, all the guys, America and the likes, are gonna feel the wrath. And you're like, yes, yes. What's your why? I'm driven with the concept of younger me. Daily, daily. I, I I think of um, there's times where I'll drive to like a KFC and I'll buy like a Streetwise two, and I'll think of nine year old me walking down it down, knowing that they couldn't afford a Streetwise two, and how that guy is seeing this guy. I will look at myself in certain spaces, dressed in certain ways, and I will be like, how will that 15-year-old me view this guy? I look at certain challenges, certain failures that I couldn't achieve as a child for whatever reason, that I'm achieving now so seamlessly, you know, and I look through the lens of a six-year-old me, 10-year-old me, 15-year-old me, 18-year-old me, and I'm like, my job, my why is to constantly make that guy proud. I'm competing with that guy. Someone will say, Penson, why do you train so hard at gym? Whatever. Because I want to miss a 22-year-old me. I want 22-year-old me when he sees and he's like, hey, Danga's 10 years older than me, did, or 15 years older than me, but he's still out training me. I'm constantly motivated, driven, by a younger version of myself and constantly wanting to outdo him while at the same time making him proud in whatever achievement that I'm doing. And now as a father, when I look at my boys, there's a level of seeing younger me. Mm. Um, I'll be doing push-ups at home and then I'll watch them do push-ups, you know. I didn't have that example, so I don't know but I can see it. T.D. Jake speaks about when he's shaving and he's, and he's looking in the mirror and he's watching the reflection of his son who is also looking at the mirror, watching him. And Uti, while he's shaving, watching his son, he's seeing who he used to be. And his son, watching him, is looking at what he will become. So I'm very conscious of that. I've always used that as a motivation and my why of seeing younger me and how younger me could have potentially seen this guy. Can I make him proud all the time? Now I'm a father and I've got younger me's. And they can really see me. So now it's a matter of how can I make them proud Mm. through my successes, you know, so that they can see what they will become. I hear you. And that's my why. Kai Green would say you have to save your own self. You're saving yourself constantly. I'm constantly making 10-year-old Penson proud, 15-year-old Penson proud, constantly. Mm. And them as well. You spoke about, speak about Kai Green. You spoke about, Kai Green spoke about darkness. David Coggins um, I know at some point you introduced me to Carl Jung. Oh, yeah. Your thoughts on the power of psychology and by psychology, I mean, I don't know if you'd call it negative psychology. So you're speaking about positive motivation. I saw myself as a kid. Mm. I'm, I want to outdo the kid. But sometimes there's like a negative there's a darkness of so so all all the what has Kai Green spoken about in the darkness? What do you understand the, David Coggins to mean when he speaks about darkness and 
what do you think Carl Jung was speaking about? So let's let's take a step back. Let's talk about Carl Jung. So please, guys, as a disclaimer, um, I'm I'm gonna try and remember what I remember about Carl Jung. Sure. So I know what's in the comments, people will correct me. So please. Sure. Well, Carl Jung wrote a book about the shadow. Mm. So in that he's speaking about being able to not just know your dark side, but to embrace it fully. He speaks about within you, there's everything from the angel to the demon. Um, Every coin has two sides and you need to fully understand and be in love with every part of you. Mm. We can't just see Hitler as a demon, the shadow. We also have to understand what it is the other side of Hitler, the mm. person who took Germany out of poverty, the mm. person who facilitated the development of VW, of this, of that, of that, of uniting a, a nation, you know, as much as there's the dark side. Mm. Again, not just be aware, embrace it, love it. It is you. Within you, Lungelo, there is the Mfundisi and the pedophile. That's what Jung is speaking about. Mm. You have qualities of pedophilia within you. Know them. Don't let them control you. Know them. Within you, you can save a drowning kitten and you can actually be the reason why you take that kitten and dunk it. Know both sides. Mm. Ukai Green understands that as a person who is in love with psychology and philosophy. Mm. And he knows there's certain areas where his strength, he can draw strength from. If I'm in war, it's very hard for me to be able to draw strength from the part of me that loves butterflies and unicorns. I need to be able to draw strength from the shadow. When you are, and you reference Ronnie Coleman, the greatest bodybuilder of all time, and he's talking That's about- a fact. Yeah, that's a fact. Okay. He's got the most wins. He's got, it's a fact. Lightweight. So, lightweight, nothing but a peanut. So he says, Wuti, when you've got 800 pounds on your back and you're squatting all the way to the ground, now you have to come up. The thought 800? Of 800 pounds. So that's like 400 kgs. On your back. What, what will make you come back up? It's not the thought of Malva pudding. It's not the thought of your beautiful kids. That's not what's going to bring you back up. It's the thought of death. Demons are the reason why you'll come up. You make this example, Uguti. I think you say pain and fear is a greater motivator in certain spaces than love. I've said it. You know. I think Tupac has also said something along those I, lines. I think the example that you use. Fear, fear is stronger than love. You, you used an example, Uguti. You will run faster being chased by a pit bull mm. versus cha- chasing a thousand rand or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, one. And... You need to acknowledge that. So David Goggins speaks about that. So Guti, once you're tired, once you're, you're injured, once you are, what's going to make you keep going? It, it, it has to be something beyond this realm. And that now speaks to the shadow, mm. the darker side, the, the, the demon. If, if, if there's guys that come in here and want to kill us, whatever the case is, we can't engage them on a level of pureness and light because that's not the energy that they're bringing here. Hmm. The only way, the only way to take down any supervillain is by meeting that supervillain in that dark space. It's Jordan Peterson. What does he say? He speaks about a, a good man is not a dangerous man. A good, uh, no, a good man? Is a dangerous man. A good man is a dangerous man. Yeah. Um, who has it under voluntary control. And I think about that every time I watch these superhero movies about Captain yeah. America, Iron Man, yeah. The Hulk, Black Widow. I wanted to reference Batman when you spoke about the dark and Bane, who speaks about the dark. Mm. But Jordan Peterson says, or rather, the reference there is Captain America, Hulk, Iron Man, Black Widow they will never be able to defeat the bad guys until they can go beyond that badness. Yeah. So if the bad guy's a killer, they must be willing to kill as good and better. And better to defeat him. Which means you have to have an ability to, to kill, kill better 
than a killer. Kids, I want to be Spider-Man. Spider-Man is a mass murderer. Yeah. You, you, you cannot be Spider-Man until you're comfortable because you kill bad people. Yeah, because again, the, the, the level of dark that you need to have, because if I'm going around killing 100 people, that means that I'm stronger than 100 people. Mm. You need to be stronger than a person who's stronger than 100 people. Mm. So the level of darkness that you need to be able to have under control is fucking scary. What's in your pain to Batman? You think? What do you think darkness is your ally? Clown <laughs> 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 making noise in the back. Oh, no. No, no, he, he gets that line. He gets that Hit line. Get the line. They won't be able to hear it. I don't know it like that. Azi, konu umchita, umchita wetu kila. Kila loves that line. Mm. That uh, you, you, you merely adopted it. Something along those lines. But he, he speaks to the fact that Upain says he's born in the dark. He's like, born like, in like the shadow. Like born in poverty. He's born, born in, in struggle. So, so, so don't... Born seeing people getting killed. 50 Cent speaks about it as well. When are you just now... The, how, how old were you when you loaded your first gun? Is this a rhetorical this question? This is a real question. I don't know. I don't remember the age, but I remember your father Pe- people, making me pe- load a gun. People don't know that. They'll be like, oh, Penwell nerd, you're talking about young And he had a pump body. gun that he kept under his you, you, seat. You, you, you need to understand, I'm talking about darkness now. Some people have never held a gun. Mm, you, you're talking to a guy who is barely eight, a con- maybe younger loading a gun on a bed on a random day Sunday. What does that do to a child's psyche? So you, at this grown age, come to me with a gun. What, what, what? You, you think a gun is your ally? We our, were, our father used to transport we, guns we, and, make, and make guns as well. We were born in it. You, you see where I'm going? We, we were molded by, by the, the gun. You know, Ukshona wa Krisani watching Itaima on the roof shooting is Bam 193. Kuma ama AK. You only heard that sound when you were a grown man. Wa ugu 193. You see where I'm trying to go with the darkness? So once you know it and have it under voluntary control, there's a line that I put put on my um on my WhatsApp. It's a Latin line. Uh, I'm going to butcher it. But it merely says, if you want peace, prepare for war. Mm. And the reason why we go around eating Marvel pudding, watching The Simpsons, living this happy go, go, go lucky life is purely because we've earned the right to. Mm. I've earned the right to go get myself a manicure and no one's going to call me soft. You're very soft. I'm going to call you soft. No, you can. Oh, But I'm saying with you, it's a bitch move, dog. It's a bitch move, dog. I dare a fucking bitch move, I, dog. I dare any of the listeners to come and tell me to my face. Because they, they know what I've earned the right to do that. Mm. You know, because I have my darkness under voluntary control. Mm. Jordan Pearson, Joe Rogan love that line of saying, which is better to be a warrior in the garden than a gardener in the war. We grew up in so much darkness and poverty and pain that when we go and tend to our roses in our garden, we say, come, we, we, <laughs> we're ready at any time. Carl Jung stresses the importance of that. Mm. He stresses the importance of that. Embracing your darkness Embracing or your shadow. Embracing to a point where it's, it's the ace in your back pocket. It's your friend. It's, it's my bestie. It's who I am. You know, um, oh, snatch. Director, Guy Ritchie, Guy Ritchie, when he speaks about the prodigal son, that clip, and essentially saying, Wuti, you are both sons. You are the son that left and you're the son that stayed. Let's start with the, a quick story of the prodigal son. What is the prodigal son? So it's a biblical story of a father who had two sons. Yeah. Um, the father is a farmer. He had animals on the farm and at a certain age he told both the sons Uguti, you can take your inheritance now while you're alive and live your best life yeah you know so the one son say Taima you've raised us well you've looked after us just to show you my loyalty I'll stay with you and work the yeah. farm the other lighty said tops guys I'm taking my inheritance I'm gonna blow it mm. 
goes out into the world, lives his best life. Sure. Guy Ritchie says, has cocaine off strippers titties, <laughs> you know, <laughs> lives his absolute best life, Great. blows through it yeah. to a point where he's got nothing left. Yeah. He blows through it um, to a point where he's so poor, he starts working in pig farms mm. and ends up eating what the pigs are eating just to survive. Yeah. Uh, once his ego was at rock bottom, decides to go back to his father and beg for forgiveness mm. and see if his father will allow him to uh, work on the farm. Sure. And when on return, on the father on the father hearing the return of his son, he tells the other son who stayed and worked all these years, go find the fattiest cow, let's slaughter in celebration of the son coming back. Yeah. The prodigal son returning. Yeah. Um that then infuriated the first son. Why are we celebrating his return mm. when he forsaked us or whatever, child the money? Don't worry about it, son. Let's celebrate. Let's welcome him back. Mm. The way that Guy Ritchie breaks down that um, parable is he says, Uguti, you are both sons. You are, one side of you is cautious. One side of you understands structure, working hard. But the other side of you is the experimental one, the rogue one, the one that wants to put his finger in the electric socket. It's crucial to understand both sides. Mm. It's crucial to understand Uguti, life requires a level of structure, discipline, working hard like that first son. Mm. But also in order for you to grow, you need to get out of your comfort zone. Mm. You need to make mistakes. You have to make mistakes. Mm. You know, you, you have to put your finger in that socket, get electrocuted, you know. And hopefully, as you progress through life, you start realizing that you are both and tapping into both and being able to utilize both at will. You mentioned your father, and I wonder if, speaking about the prodigal son, the reverse, if you've ever looked at your parents, your mother and the father, your father, mm. as potential light and dark, embracing the darkness that you claim maybe your father may have been. We spoke um, we, we've spoken about this so much in Comes and Parenting. Um, you asked me around being an involved dad and whatever, and... It speaks longer to the other side of the coin, and I keep sounding like a stuck record, but it's so important. Mm. That yin, that yang, that masculinity, that femininity, it's so important. Mm. That light, that dark. You have to use both. You Do you believe must. your parents were different in that regard? I think they sold different stories to us, which okay. made perfect sense, and that's what we needed. Because we had Umamsi, that was the light, yeah. and then Umlojo, who was the dark. Mm. You know, and... We were young, we didn't understand, but they gave us access to. Mm. So even though we didn't understand it, it's built who we are because we can access both sides at will. Do you think other children have that? And if they don't, do you I, think I, they're I, a I, disadvantage? I, I, I think everyone has it. I don't think they have it at the degree or the extreme levels that we had it. Because that might be why they get fascinated by the Andrew Tates the David Coggins, because they've never they've never seen a human so, being. So, so a, a lot of homes that I've seen is that you have mom and deputy mom. Deputy mom just happens to have a penis. Jeez. No, that's the truth, though. No? My please, wife and, please, please my, my wife and kids, you've got Jay, who's mom, and then you've got Damien Waynes, who's deputy mom. Blackish, you've got the main lady. Rainbow. Rainbow, and then you've got that chubby guy who's deputy mom. Andre Johnson. That's what happens. You know, so you don't have two different energies. You don't, you know, you don't have an energy of, uh, okay, let's go bake cookies. And then you've got the energy was, you don't have the two extreme energies. You've got an extreme of, I'm going to bake cookies. And in the episode where mom is not away, or mom is away on business or whatever, dad then puts on his apron and tries to do cookies the way that mom, mom, you don't do cookies like the way mom does. That's, he's trying to be mom. Mm. That's what we're being sold try and be the mom version at home so that's why you have situations where guys when mom is not available then dad steps in and washes the dishes and cooks and bots the boys and whatever the case may be because he's trying to fill that deputy role instead of Contro being the other side of the coin controversial question do you think one of the reasons that a lot of men are struggling mm. mentally why there's high male suicide Mm. is the lack of that darkness. Yeah, fact. Because once it hits us, and it will hit you, we don't know how to deal with it. 
the first time your penis gets hot, you don't know what to do. You fuck around, you have wet dreams. You, 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 we, we have so much darkness as men, way mm. more than women. That's why we can kill each other like nothing. When it hits you, or you won, and you haven't been able to control or manage that, it's, you're gonna implode. So let me just give you guys a pub stat. It's not a pub stat, it's a very deep stat. For every one male suicide attempt. Attempt? Attempt. There's three female suicide attempts. So females attempt suicide three times higher than men. Than men. For every one successful suicide, female suicide, three men complete and kill themselves. Meaning what it's in that we kill ourselves mm. three times more than they do. Mm. But they attempt more. Mm. Obviously, there's so many other factors. Maybe someone might say, uh, maybe women are trying to cry out and banagwe or whatever. But it means which men get the job done. Mm. We actually get that job done. Mm. We will kill ourselves. You know, if, if, if that is not an alarm bell to moms and dads and brothers and sisters right now, mm. ah, then we fucked for real. I can't stop but think about movies. Uh, last night I was re-watching an amazing movie called Black Swan. I don't know if you've seen it. Mm -mm. Darren Aronofsky. Mm -mm. About a, a, a ballet dancer played by Natalie mm -hmm. Portman. She ended up winning the Academy Award for mm -hmm. it. And in Swan Lake, I think it's Swan Lake, the the, the piece, there's a, a white queen and there's a black queen. Mm -hmm. And this lady has to navigate her way into owning the black queen because mm -hmm. even the director of the play is like, it's easy to be the white queen, the good queen. Mm -hmm. But to be the black queen, you need to get dark. Mm -hmm. You should watch it, by mm -hmm. the way. Mm -hmm. It speaks about light and dark. And while you're speaking for some weird reason, I started thinking about one of the most popular movies for everyone because it touches mm. on so many life topics. Mm. The Lion King. Mm. And how important it was for Simba to have his dad around Mufasa mm. to mm. teach him how to hunt and be strong. Mm. How important it was the prodigal son for Simba for to, to go into the get, ro get, get lost into Pride. I don't know if it's Pride Rock is where they stay, but where the hyenas stay yeah. and get exposed to that life. Mm. Getting lost now to go and find Into Timon and Pumbaa. Yeah. Lost in the wilderness. But because he'd seen some darkness, he saw his dad die. Mm. And he, he also feels got the to reason. see the hyenas. He feels that he's the reason. That he's, he's the dead. reason. Yeah, one. That darkness, of course there was shame and guilt, but that darkness mm. may have been what was needed to come back and overpower Scar because if it only been raised by Sarabi mm. and it never been exposed to the hyenas mm. and he'd never seen his dad mm. dying or being killed, mm. And he'd never gone into his own into the wilderness mm, and survived. Would desert. he have been ever strong enough? <laughs> oh, I was about to make such a bad example. Someone was like, "You guys love Misuzul." <laughs> would, <laughs> would he have been strong <laughs> enough? <laughs> yeah. Would he have been strong enough to come and actually lead? Never lead Pride Rock. Think about every hero. You spoke about Spider Man. Um. Spider-Man was brought up by his grandfather. What is it? His uh, uncle and aunt. Aunt May and uncle. Something. Yeah. So what happened to his parents? What happened to Batman's parents? Mm. What happened to Superman's parents? And and Spider-Man gets, I think, to see his uncle you getting know. killed. So also, like a Simba like, story, like, it's like, kind like of like his, a, like his, a his fault. Like Batman. Batman's so, same his fault. You know, Superman. Like, like you, you think about all these superhero movies. There's a thread. There, there has to be that dark pot. Mm. There has to be that dark pot. I'm the reason why my father died. <laughs> I'm the reason why the father died. And then I survived a desert and I'm eating bugs. I look at how I map how one of the reasons, one of the reasons why we became successful, let's just say at school. Because in Puma, we were walking in. There's kids, see, busy bees, see, we're walking three, four kilometers in the June, December, the, 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 the June cold of Enyukasek. Mm. And you get there with your peers, Abamang and staff, Basil Gumalum, Papeti Zinko, and Napoleon, no cheese. When Aunas Kaftina on our necks, that thinking, that we, we weren't conscious of it. But when you wake up at a certain time and you have to fight the cold and you have to compete, with people with full bellies and get break by them. And you have, our level of is not the same. Our drive. You, you believe your life has been a constant psychological 
training. We, Carl Jung speaks of the subconscious. He speaks of that and how we're driven by it. We living the tip of an iceberg. When you were driving here, Sorry, you weren't Dr. conscious. Joe, Dr. Joe Dispenza, I'm just bookmarking. Please carry on. You, you weren't conscious of your drive, your clutch, your what, what. Ne? You're working in a certain level of, you know, you twitching, you're doing your little toes. You're not aware of that. That's your body taking over on its own. Mm. There's certain things that we've been driven by and how we move that is, that has been shaped through our journey of life. I don't know if I'm making sense. I hear you. You know, and, I, and, and I'm fully aware of why I move a certain way. I'm fully aware why to this day, when I look at a piece of KFC chicken, I, I, I smile and get excited mm. because it, it's not the it's chicken. It's not the chicken. It represents something. It represents something. Much deeper. Much, 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 much deeper. And other kids don't have that. Other right. guys don't have that. So I see it differently. It's one of the things people don't understand about new money. Why new money balls out of control. Yeah. They've been searching for that validation. To you, you grew up in a home with a car. Yeah. I didn't. So I have to get the best car and let everyone see it. Angbali mau mobi, me so toli mal. And girls have been rejecting you your whole life. You are rejected. Yeah. Now all of a sudden, the girls that were rejecting you, you born abak shela. Abati wai mabam bintom bei wani ube grand. I've been rejected by thousands of girls, and now thousands of come on. Dr. Joe Dispenza, um, I'm not sure what his title is, but he speaks a lot about the mind. And when you mentioned the subconscious mind, I started thinking about how he breaks down that we have a conscious mind, an unconscious mind, and a subconscious mind. Mm. I don't know if the sub is the un as well. Mm. And he differentiates between the mind and the body. Jebu mm. about the body twitching and mm. things playing uh, playing out. The, the psychological journey and... One of the reasons he speaks about it is because he says you can change how you live. A lot of us over programming from young child trauma, mm. maybe molested, maybe you didn't get the trophy, mm. maybe you were the smartest kid in class, mm. Mm. maybe you were the prettiest girl. All of this plays factors as you grow older. Mm. And they build this mind map in your brain mm. where by the time you're 20, 30, you almost no longer have control of your body. Mm. The examples he uses is uh, if you've been traumatized mm. or you're always on social media, when you wake up in the morning, it's not you. Mm. You've now you pick up your yeah. phone, you remember your ex, you, you're you not thinking. And it's like you need to learn to program the unconscious mind. Uh, I don't know if it's the unconscious mind. You need to plug like, into that so that it can it override. So that it can override. Do you, do because you, you're currently working on a program and at some point, and most human beings are guilty of this, they feel imprisoned by their habits. This is who I am. This mm. is who I've always been. And you need to fight. So this is not Dr. Joe Dispenza. I'm going to tell you this uh, as a personal thing. I've got a views on Namadlos, mm. our ancestors. Like the concept of God, that people have been convinced God is external, mm. which in my journey and through my reading and what I've seen, I believe if there is a God, it must be internal. Mm. Because if we are a manifestation of God from the source, mm. I am a piece of that. So it must be in me. Mm. It can't be somewhere floating. Mm. I Some people, for some reason also, you, the people that made you sit somewhere. Mm. Uh, and it's like, I, I, I believe all of those people are inside me. Mm. And... One of the things that's driven me in my life has been figuring out, Sadhguru speaks about this, speak about the body. The body doesn't choose to look the way it does. Mm. Uh, you were given. Mm. The mind seems to have also been given. You think, oh, for some reason I like this. It's not you, it's a culmination of all your ancestors. Mm. And I realize if my ancestors, for whatever reason, I'm gonna make an assumption, mm. have lived in servitude, and have been submissive mm. to an apartheid government, to a British colonial rule, to a, a, a king somewhere. Mm. I cannot carry on operating on that program that was given to me. I'm going to have to fight it. And I think that's what m may lead to mental illness. In my head, I have told myself through my journey with I am God that if I have people that came before me to make me, mm. I'm willing to fight them and defeat them 
and I need them to listen to me because I'm here and I'm in, I want to control the ship. They can guide me by all means. But for the mere fact that I wasn't born in extreme wealth and I wasn't born into a kingdom and I wasn't born into a, a nation of colonizers and conquerors, I need them to fucking pay attention because I'm going to go do the things and achieve the things they've never even dreamt of doing. Frederick Nietzsche would call you the lion. The lion. Yo, guys, I'm nerding out here. I'm nerding out proper. So just please forgive me. So Un Un Nietzsche speaks about the stages. Friedrich Nietzsche. Friedrich Nietzsche. Speaks of the stages of development. Um, How nice would it be if we were to document, not just orally, but African philosophers? Because we have a lot. There's Asian, Confucius. Mm. We obviously have the Nietzsche's and the Kant's Mm. and the whatever. Mm -mm. (laughs) The Kant's. (laughs) But it would be so nice if we could reference our own, which is why documenting what we're doing now is mm. so fundamentally important. Sorry, Nietzsche. So he speaks of the the, the 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 different stages. So we are essentially the spirit. Guys, again, different stages of what? A human development. Okay. So again, in the comments was on correct Abbas Gangon. Um, so we the spirit, and we meet this beautiful dragon golden dragon in the sky um, with these golden scales. And um, I think he calls the dragon Daishalt is the name of the dragon. So Daishalt not do this, this I'll do that, you know, and each scale represents something that you can do and can't do. And we then, our spirit morphs into a camel, you know, and a camel is very obedient to the dragon. I will do this. I will go to school. I will do my best at school. I will get into university. I will do my best. I will get a good job. I will get married. I will have 2.5 kids. I will save. I will buy a home. I will not get into debt. You know, I will, uh, I will, uh, That's uh, the uh. camel. That's the camel. The spirit has morphed into a camel. Into a camel, trying its best to not do what it's told not to do. And every time you fall off, you cheat on your wife, you feel guilty, and you try and fix it by going back into the camp. Is it out of fear you know, of the dragon? Out of fear of, of the dragon, dragon, yeah. Because this dragon has told you what, how to live a life, mm. you know? So in today's term, we might say the dragon might be social media or whatever the case is, yeah. but this dragon is telling us how to live. So it's your girlfriend's birthday. The dragon is now saying you buy a bouquet of flowers with 100 rand notes and 200 rand notes in it. So you're gonna be this camel in order to fulfill what the dragon is telling you. Mm. You understand? So he says, Uti, then the next step is the the dissonance in that spirit of the camel going, mm. nah, fuck this. Nah, 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 nah. I can't just, you know, maybe I like having five wives. I, I, I don't really believe that the only way of success is academics and getting a good job. All of a sudden, that dissonance causes you to morph into this lion. And everything that the, the dragon is telling you not to do, that's what you do, you know? So if now society is telling you to get married, you're like, fuck that, I'm not getting married. Mm-hmm. If society is telling you that, no, you need to get a, a varsity degree to become successful, you're like, nah, hold my beer. Guns are bad. Guns are bad, okay, sharp. I'm gonna have 50 of them in my house. It's, you're doing everything against society. Mm-hmm. Elon Musk is now a line. He's doing everything against society. Society is saying, no, but you need to do this. He's like, fuck that, I'm gonna do this. You know, the way that Donald Trump is approaching, is doing this. So all these guys that, Andrew Tate, doing everything that society is telling him not to, mm-hmm. that the dragon is telling him not to. You know, that's the second level. Um, when you're speaking about your moving, I'm going, okay, you're at that level too. You're at that lion, you know? And then there's a stage thereafter. And that stage is the one of a baby. A stage after the lion? Is a baby. Are people meant to strive to move from camel to lion? So, so this is just Frederick's talking about. He I says, hear you. He, he says most people just live in camel state. So he's not motivating. He's not saying you should, you shouldn't. He's just giving his narrative. From what you've seen. From, seen. from, 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 from his stage. Thank you, G. You know, and he's saying, Uti, then there's those that go past the line and become the baby. What is the baby? The baby is what, what dragon? What, 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 what rules? A baby is one that moves and creates their own rules. You speak about the Sadhguru. Mm, those are the gurus in India. Flow, yeah. flow like water. I'm just, you know. Keep it, keep it di- going. Di- keep it flowing. Di- 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 shall like go, the water. Like, like the water. You know, so when you tell him about getting married or not getting married or going to school or not, he's like, you know, Sadhguru, like, we don't even need to eat. <laughs> you know, 
the concept of eating is already just a fluid one. So when are you busy telling me about these things, you know, I, I don't even know if I'm alive. You know, the, these gurus will tell you, Guti, they go and they meditate for, for days and months and sitting on a rock like this, no drinking, no eating, nothing, sitting on a rock. So they've transcended that. They've gone beyond the concept of mm. there being rules. And that's that next stage, mm. you know, where whether it's there, whether it's not there, whether you're pointing a gun in my face or not, giving me a hug. A baby, uh, you go to a six-month-old, you point them with the gun and see what they'll do. They'll giggle. <laughs> <laughs> or they'll cry, or they'll shit their pants. They, they don't care. The, the concept of a gun doesn't mean anything to them. Mm. It means something to you. And you're trying to, uh, what's this word, uh, uh, project something through your meaning of it. That, that, was, makes that sense. was Neo in the Matrix at, at the end of the first Matrix. That's movie. Friedrich Nietzsche. Because Neo goes from being a camel to being a lion. To being a baby yeah and once he's at the baby that's when he realizes what he he doesn't even have to dodge the bullets anymore <laughs> i don't have to dodge the bullets why do i have to dodge a bullet bullet will come out but it means nothing there is no bullet mm. you know dodging a bullet that means i'm alive because i have to fuck your bullet i have to fight you i have to be better than you i'm a lion once i get to that baby stage none of this means anything is there danger in all the information knowledge you've accumulated do you think it's made your life better, happier, stronger? Or it's <sighs> arguably made you more paranoid, unnecessarily conscious of things you shouldn't be? And the second question is, um, you seem to approve of embracing of the darkness. And do you have a plan for your children? Because so, I guess we're speaking about it in a context where no one actually brought it to us. We just found ourselves in it. So, so I think I, I love downloading information just to better understand the world. Yo, guys, I'm nerding out. Hey. <laughs> eh? Can I nerd out a little bit? Yeah. So initially I'd spoken about oh, Plato and Aristotle. So let's mm. go back. So you got Socrates. Mm. These are all Greeks. These are all Greeks. Yeah. You know, Socrates, the father of philosophy. Ah, 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 ah. You know, he used to chat to people, his students, Plato. We know Plato. Because Plato documented shit. You speak about documenting, mm -hmm. Plato, ne? Plato, then Aristotle, ne? Okay, Arist Plato, this is us. That's the world, you know. Who Aristotle was, there's the world. How can I take in the world and then adjust, ne? So you're asking me about me. I see the world like Aristotle. Mm. I don't understand the world. Mm. I have been blessed with an older brother that guides me through his experience of the world. Ne? Mm. I have TV, Ulrich Forrester, telling me this is how you treat a woman. So now I'm consuming information that is making me better understand the world. Mm. I've learned to go to people see the world differently. The way that you see the world is different from how everybody else sees it. Mm. And if I can draw more information, you know, then I will start understanding my world slightly better. So I enjoy consuming Everything from an Aristotle to a Somizi. Well, not consuming Somizi like that, but like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because they've got different views of the world. And me understanding this view and this view gives me a clearer understanding of my world. You believe most people should be like that? Yeah, because it I should be. I, 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 I wish for that because I. Maybe I should have started like this. I know I'm not that smart. And I know, Guti, you have information that I can't access or know or how to digest them. Mm. You've lived through life, gotten information, processed it, digested it, and then when you spew it back to me, you've broken it down in a way that I can consume it. Mm. So I believe, Guti, it's, it, it's only beneficial for me to shut up and listen in certain areas where I'm trying to grow. And I believe, Guti, if I ban to, uh, criminals do this the best when they go to prison. Criminals leave prison smarter in terms of crime than mm. when they got there. Mm. Because they're realizing, Wuti, Mina, I just went and I robbed Upep. Let me sit and consume this information. So mm. when I leave here, not only do I can, not only can I rob a pep way better, I can rob the entire mall without having a certain, without even have a, a gun, Gi mm. one. Because I've drawn from this. I came in here knowing this much 
And because I'm an empty vessel and I formed and I consume this information, I'm leaving and saying, well, mm. now I can. That's how I see it. Sure. You know, and even when you speak about embracing the dark side, there's many areas. So I learn this side and then learn this side. Then I've got a better understanding. I've got a more 360 view on Izindo. Whereas if I only have this side, I don't have the full picture. Children, Children. and the darkness. Considering yeah. that I don't think we chose it and it wasn't intentional. Are you gonna <laughs> let your children be? Decide <laughs> if they wanna be camels or whatever. Or? Since I was swimming, is all, don't it? <laughs> and he starts getting tired. And then he starts drowning. <laughs> <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> and he starts and he goes Bubble! and he goes back down and I'm standing and I'm like and the railing is if he just stretched a little bit he can get to the railing uh -huh. but now when he's panicking his brain shuts down mm. and I'm watching ne? and I can see people on the side panicking yes the water for me is up to my chest so I mean I can just grab him and pull him up but I'm seeing him come up and then go down mm. come up and then go down come up and then on the third time he went down you swam under the water, mm. touched the wall, came up and inhaled and goes, Bobo, Bobo. <laughs> and I go, and uh, He doesn't know his bubbles are fucking demon. <laughs> and I go, and Because uh, again, we don't do well with being in pressure situations. Mm. Ne? How can we create controlled pressure situations? Uzita realized at that time, mm. if I'm drowning, I need to save myself. Mm. Baba won't always be there, you know, or even if he is there, Motherfucker ain't doing shit. Mm. He got to tap into his dark side because he had to fight to save himself. Mm. Hallelujah, Mfundis. Amen. Amen. He had to save himself. He had to fight to save himself. If I had gone there, I would have robbed him of, of that. I would have stolen something from him. I would have stolen something from him if I grabbed him and pulled him. I would have stolen it. Mm. He saved himself. I was like, how? Because you have to carry on. Once you've saved yourself, you now live to fight another day. Fight. Mm. It's, it's, it's not just... A, 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 something that's important to me. It's something that I, I, I see as my my duty as a man. I, I have to make them see that dog. It's it's a you know like when we used to fight. She's like, mm. you 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 have to have to learn that part of you. That dog, it's so important. As you create spaces, because your mom would say we must hit each other. Yeah, your dad literally gave us boxing yes. gloves to box each other. Be, be, because we live in a time where Uzita, from when he wakes up, he's protected, he's wrapped like marshmallow his whole day. Mm. So he has to have those pockets where he drowns. Mm. And then he has to save himself. I remember when he was uh, learning to ride a bike. Yay. As if I took videos and I knew it was a bosh. He's cut, he's bleeding. He's bleeding everywhere. Mm. And I'm like, give it my foot. And color one way. Mm. But again, when you see him riding it, you 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 can't pay for that. You 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 there's cause man you say kibeli by skill, so show for up and down. Once he's gone through that, the pain of the cuts and the falls and the it's almost like it's not and I'm looking because you, you can feel there's a, a radiation that people have mm. when they achieve something. Mm. There's, there's a confidence, there's a when when the person has climbed his Mount Everest, there, there's a radiation. Like he's looking at me and the thing, like, what the fuck are you gonna do? I ran a bike, motherfucker, by myself. Yeah, everyone, he's he's got that. You can't even when he gets home, yeah, one, and he's looking at his brothers, and all of a sudden he's taller than LeBron. He's looking down on them and like, you don't know what I've been through. Boom. Fuck what you know. Like that energy only comes from going through the dark. We know the great stories of winning, uh, but the, the, the hero in the movie after Bane has fucked up Batman and throws him in that pit and then Batman starts training all over again. Mm. That journey, that journey, that prodigal son of eating the same shit that the pigs are eating, 
the, that journey of Simba eating the worms. If, if your kids don't go through that, they will struggle through life. I, as I had three stories to tell you and they were all just chucking. Let me start with this one. So I came back from varsity, I think one year, you and Uzamani were chilling. Mm. And I remember telling you guys that we're privileged. Mm. I don't know if you remember, but I was trying to emphasize, I don't think you guys understand how good we have it. Mm. And at the time I started studying wealthy people. Mm. And I realized a lot of these guys have gone through adversity mm. that we haven't. Yeah. I was like, if we're going to get into business and be rich, mm. it can't be enough to chill at home and think it's going to happen by accident. Mm. We're going to have to take ourselves out of comfort mm. and go do the uncomfortable and oh, sell it's quite and hustle. It down, yeah. And I, I think about this because one of the reasons I admire Afrikaans people mm. is they seem to manufacture struggle, controlled, mm. Mm. where rugby, rugby it's one of the best ways to introduce struggle to a normal kid. Mm. Mm. Running into other boys, bigger boys. Whose intention is field, to hurt you. Whose intention is to hurt mm. you, you know. Um, camping, mm. going fishing, mm. hunting. going hunting, going hiking, mm. swimming, going to the farm. These things that challenge you. And I'm, I think besides the stories I wanted to tell, I was just thinking in my head, if you have the ability to take on certain struggle and worse when it's easy mm. there's almost a responsibility to go further mm. um, if the other kids are scared to camp mm. and you're like I camp every day on my own it's like no go go camp in a dangerous place mm. go beyond mm. you can ride a bicycle it's cool but can you do tricks mm. you can do tricks but can you do dangerous tricks can you get on a motorbike mm. um Because I, that becomes a difference between boys and men, right? Mm. The guys who, I look at my life. I think my life has been very privileged. Mm. Your mom is a single mom, raised us very well, went to a good school, went to mm. a good university. Mm. I got good jobs working mm. in banking. Mm. At my age, I should probably be a manager, senior manager, mm. maybe 100, 150, 200,000 a month. Mm. I chose the road less traveled. Uh, number one, I didn't really like the rigidity of uh, corporate. The what? Of what? Rigidity. The routine. The rigidity. The co conformity. <laughs> hey, if we I, did it up with the I, rigidity. I, want, I wanted the, the road less traveled, but the journey I went on because of studying mm. people that are deemed successful. The road I went on is part of the reason why also today I'm not a tenderpreneur. Mm. I realized that you have the ability to become something. Mm. I remember one of the clips of Kai Green speaks about you becoming, is it more than human? When he talks about if you, if the, the, yo, there's, a, there's a clip that gets me goosebumps when he speaks about being a king. There's, there, there's a line where he says, if, 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 if you are a king, then you must be a king. But the way it is mm. what you're talking about, so see, like the, the, there's a level of transcendence that needs to happen. If you view yourself as a king, yeah, but are you doing king shit? Like, so. I never wanted to be average and mediocre, even though my life was great. I mm. wanted to become something. Mm. Part of the reason I'm, I don't want to go into tenders is because you have to become something. Yeah, and when I see what they become, I don't want to yeah. be that. But when I see another journey, I'm like, I want to be that, and to be that, you have to go through the fire. Mm. You have to, you know, if you sit with successful people, this is like motivational talk and bodybuilders and Springboks and mm. Bafana guys, even though Bafana's pub. Lionel, Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo, and mm. more, more specifically, probably Cristiano Ronaldo. Mm. People don't understand the, what happens inside. Number one, you need to find out the why. Mm. What is Cristiano Ronaldo's why that makes him shoot more balls? Kobe Bryant, LeBron, what makes him go beyond? Mm. Because the other guy is also a star. Mm. He's also got a family that loves mm. him. He's got mm. fans. But what, what's wrong with you? Mm. Um, 
Ah, I lost my train of thought. I wanted to say in the transcendence, once you decide that you want to become something, you have to go through that fire. And mm. one of my best motivational clips today is the one, I think it's called Obsession, which says when you're passionate, people are happy for you. Oh, mm. you're so passionate, you're following your passion. Once you become obsessed, people start getting worried. Mm. Hey, you, hey, this doesn't look healthy. You're obsessed. Mm. You're doing a bit... Uh... Again, the difference between boys and men is obsession. Mm. Are you able to Lil Wayne do 400 songs in one year? <laughs> Are you able to do Chris Brown 50 music videos in six months? Mm. Are you able, Beyonce, to go back to back and do full sets after doing rehearsals? Because that now is going to take you to a <laughs> something more than human. LeBron James. LeBron was born physically big, dunking on other kids. But what takes him from being so amazing to potentially being the greatest in the world, the greatest of all time. And then after even becoming the greatest of all time, where some people are like, if we tell people about this guy in the future, they'll never believe he existed. Because what we're seeing on stage with Michael Jackson, many will maybe try. He so, wasn't trying. He went beyond human. The, the, the and for part. me, I think my biggest life journey has been mm -hmm. finding my path in life. The type of part where I'm going to fully immerse myself and it is no longer, I'm no longer competing. I become the baby. I become me versus me, me versus the universe. And I remember Sean Benjamin, I think he was in Forex trading. At some point I was speaking about business and now it's tough. And he said to me, we are always fighting the universe. And if you let the universe win, it'll, you'll end up with a normal life. But most people don't know that you can fight the universe and beat it. And if you can defeat the universe, it will give you whatever your heart desires. And I think I'm on that journey where I want to find that part for myself where I become obsessed with something and I become something beyond. Which once, now, once, once you transcend, my kids, when they look at me, must once, fucking once, shake. Once, once you transcend, I think this is the fear of obsession is that you then start by sacrificing and you move to the next level of losing. Yes, definitely. I, f I fully agree with that. You, you start by sacrifice and then you lose. And then you start losing and you lose. Are you done? I wanted ones. to say something and then you can never go back. So I, that's I, why I'm not a tenderpreneur and why I don't do certain businesses. I'm scared of if I get there, I may never be able to go back. Yeah, I, I spoke to him. So he doesn't deem me my, his mentee, but he's my fucking mentor in Ghan. Mm. Ken Verige is in media. Fucking big dog. Big, big dog. What's his name? Ken. Ken? Verige, something like that. It's one of those okay. Jewish surnames. Um, it sounds like, it sounds Portuguese, Greek. Yeah. Petides. V. Whatever. V, v, v. V, v. Yeah, so we just call him Kenny V. Okay. And... He, he speaks Uguti in his journey of building. Mm. In his journey of building, he became obsessed. He became obsessed with the power, the success, the this, the that. And you start sacrificing time at home. Yeah. And then from sacrificing time at home, you start losing relationships. Yeah. Be it friends, be it family, be it whatever. You start losing. Elon Musk and divorced. Jeff Bezos divorced. Ali Kudangote divorced. How many times has Ali Kudangote been divorced? You know, so you start losing you start losing all these things. Mm. And now at his age, he's now saying, how do I get certain things back? It is possible to get certain things back mm. because people aren't made out of stone. So you can go back to your kids and whatever in their grown age and try and rebuild certain relationships. Mm. My fear is always the losing one. And watching these guys who are so successful, Cristiano, you know, I'm not saying that the soccer made him lose his child. That's not what I'm saying. But in that losing of the child process and how quickly... Sorry, just to add on, just to put the... Cristiano Ronaldo lost... Uh, was it a newborn baby that passed away? Mm. Or a young baby? Young baby, a couple of months. That passed away. Uh, mm. they, the child had something. So, so you lose that child and then within a couple of weeks, you're back in on the field playing, you know. Mm. Elon Musk... 
you lose a child and then you then find yourself spending 80 hour weeks on certain projects mm. after having lost a child i'm scared of that and it almost feels like for that obsession for that level of success that i think we might be yearning for well i know i'm not but i want to just i fear the losing of what i currently value mm. and i think that then i then am holding myself back with certain things because i'm like i'm in among swell and i'm going to the boys or whatever the case may mm. be you know whereas someone else i'm going from here to the office to go and build mm. you know and they don't have that fear that i have i don't have the fear i had the fear and i'm looking to overcome it and how you do it for me is integration so floyd mayweather mm. if i love my dad he will be part of my team if i want to spend time with my sons elon musk i will build their school at the office so for me at least mm. when i look at the flexibility of the world we live in today mm. i almost feel like you can have it all and the only reason you're not having it all is because you actually don't value it like a, like a joe rogan who said i'm going to build um my gym my this my that all at home type of thing yeah so mm. uh, but that's me you know that's why i'm i'm have, it's not obsessed but my whole thing is i will not work towards losing my kids my mm. kids will work for me we will work together we will do things together if johan rupert and i think it's arsoch i could mm. be wrong one of his business partners had two boys anton rupert and arsoch had two boys one was johan mm. the other one i forgot his name but they were both i think it's edwin they were both at stellenbosch mm. the one was doing business science the other one was doing medicine mm. Johan Rupert and Fatty went and dropped out in second year. Mm. His rich dad got him into it's either Chase Manhattan or Goldman Sachs in America to go and mm. learn mergers and acquisitions and private banking, equity, whatever. This other one went and did his medicine. Did medicine, yeah. Finished, became a practicing doctor. The fathers, because privilege is privilege, they were like, oh, you boys have had your fun. <laughs> Prodigal son. <laughs> Come home now, lads. <laughs> yeah. Enough with the cocaine. They were summoned home. Come home from New York. Co co cocaine come on strippers' from, titties. Come home from this little doctor nonsense you're doing. you're doing. Yeah. Come work for the family business, which mm. was um, Rembrandt, I mm. think, at the time. It's Rembrandt today. Mm. Johan Rupert was ready. Drop out. Yeah. Been learning about business. Oh, I'm keen. Let me just plug in. I'm keen, guys. Let's, let's do this thing. Let me yeah. go make us rich. The other one was like, I'm actually really passionate about medicine. I love medicine and I. Mm. He worked for a bit, but he was miserable. Mm. So I don't know if it was both fathers or Johan and Rupert's father, mm. Anton, said, Johan, go find something for this boy. Mm. Johan went and he found a little business with a few Nyana clinics, <laughs> kind of acquired it. Yeah. They gave it to Herzog. They were like, you like medicine? There you go. I love medicine. And today, MediClinic is one of the biggest private healthcare that's institutions in the world. That's, that's what... Um the group of individuals that we're not allowed to talk about these days. So. Would you Eric Cartman, the J-O-O-Z. <laughs> <laughs> Respect my authority. <laughs> Respect my authority. You know, that's what they do. You know, um, yeah. I was listening to. Uh, it's a beautiful thing, by the way. I admire it. Yeah, greatly. because like, again, Tina, we, we are lawyers. There may be a stereotype. We are lawyers as a family. You want to become a, soccer player, a rapper. Let's okay. just say a rapper. Okay, you want to rap? Okay, um, go finish your law degree and then you'll rap. Yeah, one. Go finish your law degree, or whatever. Then then you'll become a rapper. That's fine. We'll support you. And then you become this rapper, or whatever. And we are like, hey, um, don't you want while you're rapping just to go and sign for that company there? Kind mm. the company that they're pointing you is a company that they've bought. So they own the record label that has signed you. Mm. You know, and you now come in and you own equity in there and you do the work, the paperwork, you know? So you, as much as you rap, you're also the lawyer that does the copy watwati and you own equity in your father's record label. It's a beautiful thing. For me, when I look at the most successful families in the world, mm. it doesn't look like sacrifice. Yeah. They almost are very family oriented and that's why they have generational wealth because everybody's plugged in. They just tweak things. So you must go be a tenderpreneur on your own and sacrifice your family and move to Cape mm. Town. 
They're like, look, let me see if we can do tenders here at home. Or, so let, me, se- 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 or let me move the whole family. Um, let's have family meetings. Mm. If you can have business meetings, company meetings every Monday morning, why can't you have family meetings on yeah, Zoom? You have, you have, you have 9 a.m. status. If let's you do have, 9 a.m. status. If you work for a certain company, why don't you bring your family members in? Then you're like, oh, I don't see my wife. She's there across the office. You guys can do lunch together. Mm. I have lunch with my wife every day. Ma- mandatory but I thought you team, worked. Ma- I man- thought you worked man- at a bank. Yeah, she's a, there. A, a mandatory team lunch. Yeah, you guys go on. It's in your contract. I, I, <laughs> what's what's happening with? Mm, you guys do outreach to their school. Yeah, you guys have to volunteer, and you plug in. I, like I said, the stuff I've studied for me tells me that you can almost have it all. And is that nice Andrew Tate video? Before you speak about Andrew Tate, because yeah. I'm going to lose this point. I don't know if it's a fictional story, but an Indian man asked a black man, where are you going? I'm moving to Joburg for work. Why? Oh, to make money. It's like, oh, we Indians don't move for money. We, wherever we are, find a way to make the money there. Hmm. Andrew Tate video. Yeah, where you say that he speaks about he speaks about uh, his Muslim friends or whatever the case may be. When he was at college, when I was at college, you know, these Muslims in a small town, you know, and and how everybody plugs in, you know. Um, sometimes I wonder how my brother and I can plug in together and do things together that we both enjoy doing. That would be great, eh? That would be so amazing. We what? must try and think of it. Hmm. Hmm. What can we do together? <laughs> <laughs> but it's like it's 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 so cool once you actually because you've been this dripping tap in the family around us doing things together yeah you know and it's always a bit tricky when one is a lawyer one is a rapper one is a doctor you know then you almost need to first see you see CP striker who's scoring the goals mm. okay sharp the lawyer is now scoring the goals Lawyer, can you please be the lawyer for a record label? Mm. And then I'll come in as a rapper yeah. to be close to you, you know, and then slowly but surely create a space where we can start then pulling in. Mm. It, it, it's going to take the family coming together, kicking and screaming. Yeah. Um, Dictatorship but, within a family, but but I, I I understand the importance of the family, and I know sometimes you might see things a bit different around family and creating a family, mm. but I always look at it as forcing those that love you unconditionally. Because as much as you might create your family, there'll always be those when shit hits the fan. Who will those people be? Mm. And once you've identified, Uguti, masengula. Those people will be mm? Mm. then those people. Yeah. choice, you know, so that I know if my light were to switch off, they will take light from their candle onto my candle mm. and then try and figure it out together. I don't know if I'm making sense. Yeah. Shut it down. Penson, thank you very much for coming through. Looking forward to you joining us again soon on the panel show. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you guys. It's been amazing. Easy. Sure.